This is 2OF Entertainment. Hi, it's Kevin LeBates here, and in today's video, I want to talk a bit about how you can assess the competence and quality of a blockchain developer that you are considering for a role, rather that you are trying to entice into taking a role uh, in your company or in your organization. Because there is a problem at the moment, which is given that the blockchain space is now immensely popular, a lot of people are thinking, I'm going to start putting myself forward as a blockchain developer or a smart contract developer. And as a result, you have a bunch of people who have some programming knowledge and then have done a few tutorials online or have read a book or have um, looked at some code and thought to themselves, I know what, I know how to fire up Remix or I've got MetaMask installed in my browser um, or I've uh, copy pasted the open Zeppelin code for an ERC20 and deployed it on a test network. <clears throat> I'm now going to market myself as a blockchain developer because, hey, um, there's a demand for them and I can get good money. Um, this makes it rather difficult for recruiters and employers because you're faced with a candidate and you have no idea whether you're looking at somebody who has literally just spent the weekend studying the topic or somebody who has been passionate about blockchain for years and years, possibly even a decade, and has an immense wealth of experience and knowledge that you as an employer would be really lucky to be able to tap into. How can you distinguish between the two? Now, the first thing is the way you cannot distinguish between the two is by asking traditional interview questions that you cribbed off a Google or Microsoft uh, interview uh, website. You know, there are these websites out there which tell you this is what Google asks software developers before they hire them. Um, those kind of things aren't relevant to this space. So uh, what can you do? Well, there are a bunch of basic questions that you can ask. Unfortunately, you as the recruiter or as the employer are going to have to do some homework. You're actually going to have to know what is going on in this space yourself so that you can ask the questions and know whether the answers make sense. If the blockchain developer you're looking to hire is the first one in your company, there is not going to be somebody in your company who's actually going to be competent to assess whether or not the person actually knows what they're talking about. And uh, believe me, there are lots of people out there who um, say that they are blockchain experts but actually when it comes down to it know very little about it and the problem is especially acute because blockchain isn't just about the technology um, it's not a crank the handle follow the tutorial get it to work um, if the developer that you hire <clears throat> is going to be one of your early blockchain hires then you're probably going to want somebody who has a bit of a broader vision than just knowing how to copy-paste some code off Stack Overflow um, and deploy it onto some network somewhere. You, they're going to need to have a kind of a wider view as to what the point and purpose of all this is, because it's highly likely that without that, you're going to give them all sorts of instructions that actually make no sense, and they'll just do it, and you'll be wasting their time, and you'll be wasting your own time and money. So uh, the answer to this is you're going to have to do your homework. You're actually going to have to read up on what blockchain is all about, um, and try and understand what the principles behind it are and what the various components in the space are. So if I was interviewing a blockchain developer for a job because I was hiring, except I hasten to add I'm not, um, there would be some first basic questions that I would ask, like, have you installed MetaMask in your browser? What's the best and worst thing about it? Um, other questions would be, you know, uh, if it's in Ethereum, get them to name at least two of the test networks just off the top of the head. If they can't answer that, you're wasting your time with them. Um, then you can start digging into uh, deeper questions about, for example, solidity. Um, ask them a question about how you would handle uh, dealing with uh, arithmetic uh, relating to floats, for example, because solidity doesn't support floats, it only supports integers, and you have to either load in a library or do all sorts of um, complicated stuff in order to deal with decimals and things like that. So uh, there are some simple questions that can be asked just to immediately filter out the people who are uh, chances hoping that they can get on a gravy train without actually doing the work. Um, 
I guess, rather than continue to talk on this, maybe I should put together a list of what I think are suitable interview questions, depending on roles and stuff like that. Um, I may do that if I feel like it. Anyway, that's today's video. Hope you thought it was interesting, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.